What's up, guys? This is Russ Allen. I am the student ministries pastor here at West Shore Free Church. I want to welcome you all to the first night of Life Groups. I hope that you guys are excited for this year. I hope that you're excited to grow in your relationships with one another, and most importantly, to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And tonight, we are going to kick off a series on the doctrine of man. Now, the doctrine of man is a theological concept that we're going to unpack over the next few weeks. But what this boils down to is answering some of the most important questions in life. Questions like, who are we as people? What is our essence? What are we made of? What is our nature? What are we really like at our core? And are we all that we are supposed to be? Tonight, we're going to kick off this series by learning about the creation of mankind. Now, since this is the first life group night, this is going to be an abbreviated lesson, but it is nevertheless fundamental. I would say it's a prerequisite, something we have to know in order to understand who we are. We have to answer the question, where do we come from? See, our society gives us a wide range of answers to this question. Those from a naturalistic perspective will tell you that we are all merely the product of biology, derived from random evolutionary causes. You could say it's the, the coming together of chemical goo. And we continue on as people as the propagation of X and Y chromosomes. We're nothing more than chemical reactions. Those on the, uh, another extreme with a more creative bent will go as far as to say that we are the embryonic state of some intelligent alien life form. And we hear everything in between. But these ideas, while fascinating, are ultimately unsatisfying. Where do we really come from? What are we really like? So before we get into the lesson, I want you to pause and read a few verses about the origins of humanity. Welcome back, guys. We are going to unpack some of those passages that you read. And I want you to know tonight what our main point is. What are you going to take away from tonight? Well, it is that we are a beautiful creation, carefully made by a loving creator God. We are a beautiful creation, carefully made by a loving creator, God. See, God formed us from the dust of the earth. He molded us and formed us like a potter does with clay. Because we were made this way, we have a special beauty and value that nothing else in creation does. However, because of sin, which we'll talk about in a later lesson, we certainly have imperfections. The oneness and wholeness in our persons that God intended are tainted with sin. 
the effects of sin on the lineage of mankind are apparent. We can see it. We have defects in our bodies, defects in the way that we think, defects in what we desire. And certainly, some of these are easier to see than others, and we'll never know why some people are given some that others are not. However, the Bible does tell us that the disadvantages we are born with can be used to glorify God. Listen to this uh, passage from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. It's talking about Jesus. It says, As he passed by, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. So we know that even our shortcomings in the way that we are as a consequence of sin in the world, we know from this passage it's not necessarily because of your sin or the sin of your parents, but it is a result of sin in the world, but God can use it to glorify himself. And yet, even the defects that we possess do not negate the beauty and care in which we were created. If you saw an old cracked painting sitting in the corner, you might not think much of it. However, if I told you that it was created by Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo, what would you think then? you would probably take the picture and run. Why? Because its value, first and foremost, lies in the value and worth of the one who created it. And the same is true with us. So, despite our brokenness as a result of sin, you are nevertheless a masterpiece created by the God of the universe. Don't ever forget that truth. We have to both assert our value as people crafted and formed by the ultimate artist, God himself, while also not overlooking the detrimental effects of sin in the world and in ourselves. Now, this brings to mind an interesting question that I'd like for you to answer with your groups. Well, I hope you had some good discussion about that question, and I want to I talk about it a little bit. See, if we only emphasize our value, we will miss how far we are from perfection. That's one of the temptations of our society, is to just tell you how great and how perfect you are. But emphasizing our value at the neglect of our imperfection is like thinking that you are the best basketball player in the world because your dad is LeBron James. Now, why that, while that certainly gives you value, you should also especially know how far you are from being the best basketball player in the world 
because your dad is LeBron James. You have a first-hand look at seeing the skill that he has and how great of a basketball player he is. And the same is true for us as Christians. We know that we have value because we're created by God, formed carefully by him. But we can also examine in ourselves how imperfect we are because we know who God is and we can measure ourselves by him and his perfect standard. We know how far, how far short we fall. But on the other hand, if we only emphasize our brokenness, we lose all reason for protecting or preserving life. See, if there's no inherent value, then we have every reason to cast people off if they are no longer useful to us. This is why we need to emphasize both. We need to emphasize our value as created beings that we're carefully crafted and molded by our creator God. And yet, we are broken because of sin. As we conclude tonight, I want you to know that these passages about creation that you've read not only tell us important information about ourselves like we've discussed, but also important information about God. See, it teaches us that God, from the very beginning, was willing to get his hands dirty for us. I want you to picture in your head the intimacy of God kneeling down in the mud in order to mold us and bending over us to breathe life into us. Perhaps the first thing that Adam saw as he opened his eyes into life was the smiling face of God who had just breathed life into him. And friends, God, from the beginning of time until the end, has not stopped getting his hands dirty for us. He comes into the mess in order to give us life. Perhaps you've been listening to this lesson tonight, and it's hard for you to believe what I'm saying. Maybe you believe it with your head, but you don't feel it in your heart. I don't feel beautiful. I don't feel carefully crafted. Why did God create me this way? Why am I not like others? You know, a lot of people ask those same questions about the blind man that we read about in John 9. And I'm sure the blind man himself was wondering the same things. Why was he created this way? Jesus tells them that it happened for the glory of God, as we read. Great. But I want you to know that it was more than empty words. Verses 6 and 7 say this. After saying this, Jesus spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Jesus doesn't just give the people an easy answer. He does something infinitely better. He shows the man that he 
is the creator himself. Come to give hope to all those who cry out his name. He formed the mud that made his eye be able to see, just as God formed us from the very beginning. Jesus gives hope for our brokenness. Keep trusting him. Keep pressing in to him. Remember your value. Remember how far you are from perfection. And also, never forget that Jesus has come to give you life and to restore you and renew you and make you a new creation. So that's my prayer for you all tonight, and that's my prayer for you this year. Keep trusting in Jesus. Keep turning to him. And so with the rest of your time tonight, I'd love for you to think through what you'd like your life group to be this year. How can we help each other to know, to love, and to trust Jesus more? And so here are a few questions to guide you in your time 